Conservation Efforts of the Black Rhino, Diceros bicornis, in South Africa and Abroad, by Josh Ellison. The rhino species has been around for 50 million years. At one point in time, it was estimated that there were more than 850,000 black rhinos in Africa. Then they started to be hunted for their horn, for sport, for food, for safety, or just to be killed because they were thought to be vermin by the new foreign settlers. By 1960, the number went down to 100,000. By 1995, that number reached an all-time low of 1,000. At that point, conservation efforts in South Africa were finally becoming a priority for this beautiful animal. It took 15 years to get the number up to just under 5,000, but that number is starting to slow down to the increase of poaching of black rhino horn. Some of the poached rhino horns are sent to the Middle East to be used as handles for daggers, but the majority of them are sent to Vietnam. The Vietnamese upper class use the horn as a sign of higher social standing. They believe that it detoxifies the body and can cure anything from serious illness to a hangover. However, this is not possible because the rhino horn is made from keratin, a fibrous structural protein, which is the same thing that human nails, hair, and outer layer of skin is made from. There is no scientific proof that the rhino horn is effective in combating any illness, serious or not, or hangovers. The poached black rhino horns sell on the black market for approximately $100,000 US currency per kilogram. And with the black rhino horns weighing up to 3 kilograms, each horn could be worth up to $300,000. Only a small percent of this money goes to the poachers themselves, but that is still a lot of money for people that are impoverished. To combat poaching, groups like the Black Mambas, an anti-poaching organization founded in 2013 by Transfrontier Africa and based out of Kruger National Park in South Africa, are needed. It's ran by a group of women who go through an intense six-week training to learn how to stop poaching by finding and dismantling snare traps. Their belief is that the war on poaching would not be won with guns and bullets, but through education of the local communities to better understand their natural heritage with the land and the animals. Women were chosen for this job due to the general nature of females to be more caring of animals and less corruptible. Up to this point, not one female has been corrupted. A new idea being used to stop poachers is the dehorning of rhinos and is currently being done on private reserves. The rhinos are tranquilized and the horn is sawed off above the germinal layer so the horn can regrow naturally. This process has to happen every 12 to 24 months before the rhino horn attracts the poachers. These reserves currently tag and stockpile the horns in an undisclosed location to be sold on the open market if the rhino horn ban is lifted. There is a lot of controversy behind this because the lifting of the ban on ivory from elephants actually increased the poaching of elephants. The countries that purchased the tusks thought that the elephant must have made a comeback. Not all black rhinos die from the result of having their horn removed. Others are left to die by the poachers but are found by park rangers. One such case involves a black rhino nicknamed Hope that resided in Lombardy, a wildlife preserve in Eastern Cape. Hope was tranquilized and had her horn and part of her skull cut off to maximize profits for the poacher. When she was found, she had maggots in her skull eating away at the dead flesh. Hope underwent facial reconstructive surgery to try and repair the damage done and to close the wound that was exposing her nasal cavities, but the hole was too large. A prosthetic had to be made to cover the area where she once had her horn. Sadly, on November 13, 2016, she passed away. One major way to make the black rhino horn open trade a success is with more education to the users of the horns. Currently, the Vietnamese government is working hard to inform their people that the black rhino horn does nothing for them. More work needs to be done in Africa as well, such as more efforts need to be put in place to prevent poachers from being able to get to the rhinos, and tougher laws need to be made and enforced for the poachers. Another controversial conservation step is the legal hunt of black rhinos. To offset the cost of protecting these animals, the private reserves are allowed to have legal rhino hunts for a certain number of marked bulls every year, with the max being five. The private reserves use the money made from the hunts, starting at $125,000 US, to offset the cost of the preservation of the black rhinos. The bulls selected are older and have started to attack and kill the younger males because they find them as a threat. In addition, these animals are called to allow the other males to input their genes in the gene pool for genetic diversity and stability. Since there is not a lot of breeding stock, the black rhino DNA is limited in its diversity. New genes are needed to diversify the gene pool. 
Ways to do this are to move the black rhinos to a new location to breed with the existing stock. DNA databases are used to monitor the offspring to ensure that all is going well with the black rhinos and that inbreeding is kept to a minimum. The male rhinos are leery when moved to a new location or when another male rhino has been moved. It takes up to two years before they feel comfortable colonizing another's land. The female rhinos are not as phased by the move because they do not see other females as competition. More land is needed to be able to create more black rhino herds for diversity. The South African government is looking towards the landowners for help. Sometimes it takes more than one landowner to create enough territory for the new herd. Also, the landowners must be willing to remove the fences in between properties when needed. On September 22, 2016, which is deemed Black Rhino Day, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife burned their stockpiles of confiscated rhino horn to send a message to the smugglers of rhino horns that the U.S. would not tolerate the illegal rhino horn trade. The rhino horn protest burn took place at the San Diego Zoo in California. This black rhino horn burn was a good start of the Conference of Parties to the Convention of the International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, held in Johannesburg, South Africa. This is an international agreement between governments that only meet every three years to ensure that the animal and plant specimen trades will not lead to a species extinction. If black rhino horn is worth more than gold, silver, or even cocaine, and is relatively easy to come by, poaching will be hard to stop. For the poachers, poaching is an easy means to support their families, especially in an area where a lot of people do not have access to a decent education, jobs, or living conditions.